Welcome to Mailbag, where I spend my money so you don't have to spend yours. If it's your first time here, click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoy it. Hello lab mates, I've got loads of stuff here. This is a review item, this is pretty exciting. I don't know what's in the other stuff, we'll find out. First thing, let's find out what this is. Don't forget to subscribe if it's the first time you've been here. Click the bell icon, that sort of stuff. If you're already subscribed and you subscribed at the very beginning and it didn't allow you to click the bell icon, Unsubscribe, resubscribe again, and I should allow you to click the bell to get notifications. 10 watt, 30 dB, DC to 4 gigahertz. Inline BNC attenuator. There you go. 10 watt, 30 dB, DC to 4 gigahertz, apparently. I'm not sure how you get 4 gigahertz on a BNC connector because these aren't rated for 4 gigahertz. I think they were rated for about, was it 1 gigahertz max or something? Was that right? I can't remember. But um, yeah, they don't go that high. So, don't quite believe the specs. Some kind of rating like 10 watts, it's fine. Even does 5 watts, it'd be fine. And 30 dB is the main thing I'm looking for, whether it's critically attenuating. So this is the sort of thing you use on a bit of test gear when you're trying to measure a signal which is too strong for the input level rating of your test gear. You chuck this in line, and just chuck it straight in series, nice and simple, and it will drop it down by quite a bit. At least that's the theory. Hopefully it actually does it. And the second line. Oh, I hate the stuff. Look. This is another one, different style. It's supposed to be rated at 5 watts, 10 dB. Oh, other one. In focus. So, here you go. 5 watt, 10 dB, DC to 4 gigahertz. Again, I'm skeptical about the ratings, because B and C's aren't supposed to go that high, because of the impedance mismatch. Anyway, 10 dB and a 30 dB. I did get these for something I was working on. There's particular testing I was wanting to do. Now that's so long ago, I've completely forgotten what it was. Yeah, I've been meaning to get these for ages anyway. I've always wanted to get some of these. How good they are, I don't know. I'll do some testing on them at some point. So here we have three packages, which are all from Element 14. So I thought, well, I'll just do them all in one go. Do one big clump of these. Yeah, they're probably capacitor or something, I'm guessing. We'll find out. Oh, hello, Paul. My cat's come to join us. Cat text. You have to swing around to the cat. No, she's leaving. Alright, let's get started. Lots a couple of distractions with cats and children and stuff. Packet inside a packet. Awesome. There's two packets inside a packet. Look at that. This keeps on going. Really? All that for two capacitors? You're joking. 1000 Moncaferra 25 volt axial cap. Okay, what's in the next one? Oh, this one's slightly better. This time we've got five capacitors. All that packaging for this. Somewhat excessive. Anyway, these are 25 volt, 1000 microfarad. Different brand. 105 degree rated, and these ones are 85 degree rated. Um, I think these were somewhat more expensive than these ones, I believe. I can't remember exactly, but I basically ran out of these things, or so I've got very little of them left. Uh, 1000 microfarad. Yes, this is my 1000 microfarad draw, and uh, I used a couple of my last ones for that particular rating. Now I've got some more. A bit better. Right, let's see what's in the next one. Oh, look. It's like deja vu. I could have sworn I just opened one like this before. Oh, there's only one packet in this one. <laughs> yeah. Let's have a look. Oh look, there's some more capacitors. It's two more. All that packaging for two caps, again. 25 volt, 1000 microfarad. Why am I getting three different brands of caps all the time? This is just... What? Hold on. I need to check with this. Well, it does turn out that I did actually order three different types of caps. I don't know why. Maybe it's different prices, maybe it's different availabilities. Different time frames, I'll get them a bit sooner. And all arrive at the same time. That's fun, isn't it? Oh well, last one of these. It looks the same again. Well, I should have slightly different actually. I'll take that back. This one's very slightly different. More caps. These are Vichet ones. 25 volt, 47 microfarad. Now I was waiting for these because I think I actually run out with that particular type because I've only got 100 volts stuff like that. I've got quite large ones. And um, I actually used some quite large caps in a Datron repair I was doing instead of this tile. Because that's all I had available, the big ones. I put them up, I was swapping them back out, but uh, 
at least now I've got some smaller ones. Yep. Capacitors, not exciting. I think the thing about axial caps that was quite annoying is that they're a lot more expensive than radials. And especially now as things are going surface mount as well. So this older kind of design, they're getting quite expensive, which is kind of annoying. This packet of 25, I think that was something like $40 or something like that. It's surprisingly expensive. It might be more than that actually. It's kind of annoying, but it costs what it costs when you've got to fix things. But the radial caps are much cheaper than these. They're, you know, half the price generally, sometimes much less than that. If I know a decent source where you can get high quality caps cheaply, let me know. I've still got the Banggood item there, which is a review thing. Have a look at that soon. Right, these are battery holders. So these are quite nice ones. I use these in some projects and they're actually really nice quality. I'll zoom in by going the other way. So these are quite nice ones. You've got these spring on the end like this. These tabs instead. These are meant for surface mount attachments, so you want to put them into a circuit board, you can just solder them straight on. If you don't want to do that, you can actually just bend the tabs up a bit. Um, but if you've got a metal casing, you have to be careful because you can't do that, because otherwise you're just likely to short the mount of metal casing. But if you've got a plastic housing, that's fine, doesn't really matter. Actually, these aren't quite the same as the ones I've got before. They're not quite the same. They're the same design. The ones I've got before actually had some screw holes on the sides. I don't know if it's on the corners or not, but there's a couple of screw holes on the sides out the way of the, of the cell so you can screw them down to a circuit board or onto a casing or whatever. This doesn't have that, so these aren't exactly the same as the ones I've got before, but the same kind of thing. So if you want to do you know, service mount battery connectors on your PCBs, these are good for that. 18650 batteries. And it says something on the bottom there. Yeah, there you go. 18650. Oh look, marshmallows. Grinding stones. The idea of this, although it doesn't really want to turn that well, mm. it's about it we're in. It's a bit stiff. So you stick this on a drill, and you can put drill bits inside here. You rest them inside here, and slide them up that way. And you can use this to sharpen your drill bits. You know, you can use your drill, you know, like a cool disc driver. You know, stick it on there, and that'll spin it around. Although it tends to be a bit. This one seems like it's not the best quality. This one, it's a bit stiff. Maybe it'll free up the time. In fact, the audio is getting better just doing that. Maybe it's rubbing slightly. There is a nut in there, which appears to be coming loose now. That's unscrewing. Let's find out it pulls apart, shall we? Oh, there we go. That's how it pulls apart. Yeah, it's not too bad. I suppose you've got to use a bit of lubrication. But now the nut's falling out. Here's a nut. Here's a washer. And there's the grinding stone in there. Yeah, I think it's just rubbing on the inside. Yeah, because it's been pulled one, one way. It's actually been pulled against the side. It's not got a shoulder. So I actually wonder if this washer should be on the other end of that. It's for sharpening drill bits. Yeah, now I put the washer on the other end instead. It's uh, it spins freely now. It's, it's that's how it's supposed to be. It's been put together in properly. In fact, I think it might even need more washers than that because it looks like it's offset. But you know, because you want to drill do a drill bit in this slot here, it may not actually line up with the stone. So yeah, I think it needs some adjustments still, but it'll do the job. We've also got this little spanner here with a, another nut and washer, spare one. Yeah, I think it's needs another washer on that side. Drill sharpener is a bit cheap and nasty, it's not exactly the best thing. They are really cheap to buy, quality is not that great, but it might be the sort of thing which would be good enough to do the job. I would have to try it and maybe let you know, but uh, yeah, it is cheap. It wasn't much, it's probably five bucks or something. Alright, so we've got a bunch of stuff here from RS. Four of those. Wow, there's a lot in this one. Okay, that was really fast. I only ordered these a few days ago. That's quite impressive, actually. So these are DG211 BDJ. You can just about see them in there. They're dip devices and dip 14, I think they are. Get the focus, get the reflections off it. You can probably see in there. Might, maybe 16. These are, if I can remember, that'd be really helpful if I can remember. So these are quad switches. Right, so you've got the old 4066 normally open switches, electronic switches. These are normally closed switches. I got these because my Marconi 2955, I was having some issues with audio distortion on the AF output. 
and I think it's actually the amplifier itself. But whilst I was digging around, I thought there's all these weird parts in there which I don't recognise as things I'd normally have. So I thought, well, I'll get a bunch of them whilst it's still available. And this could be something to use in other devices as well. I might, but my only gear might use these too. So I thought I'd get a bunch. I think that's about ten or something like fifteen maybe. What are these? Capacitors. So what we got here? I don't know, it's a 108 I'm waiting for caps to do the Dactrons. These are 10 microfarad 63 volt. These ones are unreadable. There we go, 25 volt, 47 microfarad. I've got some other ones as well from uh, element 14. 1000 microfarad, 25 volt. Some more lows. All the axial caps, these ones are pretty chunky ones. These are Kemet ones, which are, you know, Kemet's high quality. These are actually quite cheap. That's how I grabbed these ones. I was surprised by the price on these, I think they may be clearing them out or something. But um Kimmet one's usually pretty good. Oh, some more caps. This one I'm doing all these all together because it's just quicker. 33 microfarad, 25 volt. These are the ones I was waiting for. 33s. Because I had 47s, which were oversized. I had 10s while I was getting low on them, so I bought some more. And these are 33s, which I didn't have. So then these for the Dactrons. On the analog ball, the Dactron uses these capacitors. They're used in like a bootstrap circuit. Yeah, bootstrap circuit is what it's used in. So I was really low on these, so I grabbed a bunch of them. Again, these are not cheap. I think these ones are about $4 each or something like that. It's horrendous prices. Alright, these are LEDs. These are what I was using on the Datron project for the new display. SML D15 DWT86, these are 0603 sized LEDs. These ones are orange. So these are used for the enunciators. So the best way to show like the kilo ohms and mega ohms and volts and stuff like that and the plus and minus symbol. Those are the LEDs I'm using on that. So I thought I'd get some more because I'm going to need them. All right, new item, let's find out what's in this box. Oh, bag, box inside the bag. Also, I was going to give you a bit of a sneak peek about what this is, but uh, get to check out the review video when I publish that, which won't be too far away. It might only be within the next couple of weeks, actually. Don't forget to check out my main channel. If you're not subscribed to my main channel, make sure you go and subscribe to that as well. At the end, after we finish watching this video, there's links down below to that in the description. As there are for all these items I've been showing you. It's a Vigo Tech laser engraver. It's also supposed to do some cutting as well, but I'm not quite sure what materials are going to cut yet. It's not super high power, but it's one of the upper levels. This is the 20 watt version, or well, they claim 20 watts. Should have probably mentioned this is a say a review item, but it's been provided to me at no cost by Banggood. I should definitely specify that. And this is the VG L7X version. So make sure you go and check out the links down below for this item, and also check out the review video when I actually go to do that, which shouldn't be too far away. There's lots of different laser engravers available. And I chose this one because it looks pretty simple and it's 20 watts. They offer different power ratings. You could choose which one you wanted and also this, the wattage um, that you pay. But that also limits your options. So if you need to do some cutting of some materials, you might be able to cut with this. But if you've got a lower power laser, you probably can't. Uh, it depends on what you're trying to do. If you only want to do engraving and marking, then it's probably fine. But uh, if you potentially want to do things like cut some plexiglass or something like that, maybe you'll need something a bit more like this. I don't know. I've got no idea. I've never done laser cutting myself or laser engraving. Never done it. So this is going to be quite an interesting experience for me. I'm trying to figure this out as well. So we've got USB cable and some death adapters. Yeah, you've got carriages, stuff like that as well. Very similar sort of construction as a 3D printer, I suppose, with the... Uh, Cast them in channels, exactly the same kind of channels used on 3D printers. Really commonly used. Power cable here for the diff adapter. Pre cut stuff. Fix the glass bit, so I'm guessing the power supplies in there. You watch out for review for this thing. I've obviously got to construct it and everything as well, build it all up. But it should be quite interesting trying to figure this thing out as I go. I'm sure I'll make some big mistakes along the way. Make sure to subscribe, click the bell icon, give us a thumbs up if you like the video. If you see any items here you liked, check out the links down in the description down below because there'll be links to various items here. I think just about everything here apart from capacitors will be linked because they're just capacitors, you don't need links for those. But all these other best pieces, you know, these will all have links down below to purchase pages. And those are affiliate links, so I get a commission if you buy those things to help support the channel. And don't forget to check out this review when it comes up. Get you there, thanks for watching.